Hello, I'm Mark Tweddle. Welcome to You Tell Yours, where we share with you stories from our storytelling classes, as a podcast and on YouTube. Now don't forget to go to youtellyours.com to learn all about our classes, both online and in Burbank, California, where these stories were recorded. This is episode 18, and this week's story is from actor Jeremy Ratchford, about a simple meal in a small restaurant in Moscow. What could go wrong? So my intention was just to pay for dinner. I had been invited to Moscow, and on my flight over, I befriended a, a young articling law student named Tom. We caught on like brothers, and I said, "Look, I'm going to be there. <clears throat> I don't know the language. Do you want to, you know, kind of hang out and act as an interpreter?" And it worked out fine. We went to this event, and after we went for dinner, we have dinner, and uh, he goes to reach for his wallet. I said, "No, no, no, no. This is on me. Thank you. This has been great." He had to go because he had school the next day. And uh, I call the waitress over, and I give her my credit card, and five minutes goes by, ten minutes goes by, come up to 15 minutes, and I kind of said, excuse me, and this young woman comes over, and she's very distraught, and she just looks at me, and she says, the credit card is gone. Uh, gone? Gone. <laughs> oh, gone. Uh, where? Uh, and she doesn't know what to do, so she takes me out. Uh, the restaurant's in the back, there's a bar off the side, and a post to stand, and she takes me. The, the, the credit card was taken to a credit card machine. It's the 80s, it's that traveling kind of that can move everywhere. And the credit card machine is sitting on the bar, and sitting right in front of the credit card machine is a guy that looks like an extra from The Sopranos. He's got a blue, dark blue tracksuit with one stripe down the arm and the leg. He's got a light vest on. Shoes that look like, his running shoes look like they've been through a wood chipper. He's got his back to me, but he's right above it. And I look past him and there's a guy on the other side of the bar that goes, to which he, from the back, kind of went, and he turns and looks at me, and that's when I realized, He's got a face like a paddle and a nose that looked like someone tried to melt three carrots together. He just looked like he'd been hit many times. Uh, the only thing missing is like a neon sign blinking saying, this guy stole your credit card. I'm the only one that sees this, I guess. Uh, the waitresses are still running around, but I get ushered into the manager's office and I use their phone and I phone uh, the credit card company and I cancel the card. Um, and I go back out and I'm looking through the window and I see that they're all still there. This is taking about 10 minutes, but now there's, there's another guy in the equation. There's a guy standing in the corner, just standing by himself doing nothing, but they're all kind of giving themselves this little nod hockey. Um, the manager is another young woman and she, she says, you know, can you give me your information? I give her my name, my hotel room and stuff. I say, it pops up, let me know. And uh, I go to leave the bar and I'm not 10 feet out of the door when I'm approached by three large wrestling looking bodybuilding guys. Uh, but they're dressed a lot nicer. They've got the Easter colored pastel shirts with the alligators on them. And uh, the one guy comes up and he goes, you lose credit card, huh? Oh, okay. Uh, I said, uh, is, is this card important to you, no? I said, no. He says, uh, whoa, 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 I don't speak Russian, that's my limit. And he just goes, he walks to the curb and there's a woman getting out of a cab. Uh, she just looked like a woman coming from work, uh, uh, someone that worked in an office. She was not, she didn't have a name like Natasha and Fedora, that long, you know, just normal. And they have this brief conversation and she comes over to me sort of like, I just, just, my friends are wondering if for to get your credit card back, you might offer them a present. Uh, I said, how much? She says, maybe not so much a present, but money. So, I'm already there, how much? <laughs> the biggest guy leans in at that point and goes, he's gold card, no? <laughs> okay, 
Uh-huh. Uh, I said, uh, you know, this is my first time here. Uh, why don't you ask your friends how much they want, and I'll see if I can pay that. And the guy goes, 500. And I went, <laughs> sorry, uh, the card's been canceled. I'm not giving you 500 bucks to get a dead card back. Uh, and, and they have this little, little chat, her and the guy, and she goes back and says, my friends are for to have to punch somebody. <laughs> and they want to make sure it is worth their while. And I said, listen, tell them I'll give them a hundred bucks. And the guy goes, <laughs> trying to imitate what I had done to him. And uh, he doesn't, doesn't bite on it. And while this is going on, Paddleface and his buddies have come out into the parking lot and have kind of split up and are walking through the parking lot, throwing looks back at our gang, trying to be inconspicuous. Mm -hmm. And it's at this point that I realize there's Russians six, Canadians one. <laughs> <laughs> and wants them to stop and just kind of, this is my own, the Canadians get this, this is my own 72 Summit series. Um, the same year, the Toronto Maple Leafs were up against the Los Angeles Kings uh, to see who would go to the Stanley Cup. And Doug Gilmore and Wayne Gretzky were the captains. And the Kings were just dogging Dougie Gilmore, just, just beating him down, beating him down. He finally had enough, and he slammed his stick. He skated over to their bench, slammed his stick down on their bench, and just kind of pointed on him and said, you know, one at a time, I'm done. They just like, it was in the front page of the news. He was just this little man standing up, and I channeled him. <laughs> and as I see these Russians, and I just start going, look it. I'm getting a little fucking sick and tired. Everyone looking at me like Daffy Duck with their eyes blinking with the money sign. They're not there fucking it, fucking it, fucking it. Did these fucking guys are fucking it. And, I, 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 and I'm just barking and barking, and I know all they heard was fuck, 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 fuck. And I turned on my heel like, that's it. And I started walking away down the street. And as I'm walking, the street got longer and longer. And, got, you know, and it got darker and darker. And my ears kind of turned back like this because I could hear my own feet. And I'm just waiting for the someone sneaking just to hit me. And I'm, walk, and I'm trying not to walk fast, but I'm trying not to run. I'm just trying to walk like I fucking can walk. And I get to the corner and I throw it back for the first time. There's no one on me, and I just start running. No one's on me. I get back to my hotel. Relieved, I'm done. I call my brother back in Canada, and I cancel. I double call. I, I say, you got to cancel the card there, too, because I don't know if it worked here. Like, who knows? You got to double cancel it, and I sit down. I'm going, I'm good. And I'm sitting there just for a few minutes, just, just, just trying to gather my thoughts, and then I hear a knock at the door. And... I don't know. I, I I don't know if it's my door. I don't know if it's it's out in the hall. Uh, so I kind of creep across the room, and I look through the little hole, and it is it's it's the the, the door right down there. Someone's at that door. It's not mine. And I went because no one followed me, and there's no way they can know where I am. And then I remember that I left all my information with the manager of the restaurant. I thought. If she's got that, most guys found out about it in the parking lot. What's to stop them from getting all my information? I start to panic. I'm getting all nervous. I got to go back. Uh, but I can't go back as I am. I got to go incognito because they won't be able to know who I am. So I change my clothes. <laughs> I go back the opposite way. And the main street, it's not the long, dark street. It was the, now it's the main street. There's a lot of people on it. And I kind of walk through the crowd, do one of these. And I get back into. Uh, um, uh, the restaurant, and uh, I find the manager. I say, "Can I have that piece of paper?" And she's like, "Why?" And I said, "I just can I that piece of paper I wrote. Can I just have that back?" Well, why do you need? I said, uh, "Look, I was approached by three guys on the parking lot, and she just started walking straight for the door, like she's about to solve this problem." I grab her, and said, "No, no, 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 the card's canceled. Like I don't want any more stink on this. Just give me." She gives me the piece of paper. I put it in my pocket. I'm all good. I'm done. Thank you very much. And as I turn around and look, I see the waitress again, and this, this girl, and she's still like this has just ruined her night. And it really wasn't her fault. Uh, and I had been a waiter for a long while, so I knew the kind of thing is. I had forgot to tip her, even though I had a free dinner. I forgot to tip her, so I, I took that twenty dollars and said, "Thank you. Your service was great. Don't worry about the card." I said, "But is there is there a back door to this place? Because <laughs> I just don't want to go out the front again." She takes me to the back. I do the scan. There's a couple guys smoking, but no big deal. I get out of there, and I get back to my hotel safe. And for the years that follow, 
I had this strangest feeling because it was just a credit card, but it was sort of like your lighter or your hat. It was like a little piece of me got kidnapped in Moscow, and I wondered what happened to my little gold credit card. Uh, I wondered. I, I didn't want them to like be buying cheap cigarettes and vodka at a corner store. I just hoped, you know, there was this part of me that said, I hope. He's got a rubber band around him and a passport and travel papers of a secret identity for like a Jason Bourne type of guy. He's in, he's in that Man of Mysteries uh, 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 what you, the safety deposit box. And I remember every time I got to watch the news or the BBC or something, I kept waiting for some sort of international conspiracy to be happening. And that the Interpol and everyone, they're, they're looking for one man. There's one man at large and there'd be this passport picture up on the screen. I wouldn't recognize the picture, but the name <laughs> would be Ratchford. <laughs> Jeremy Ratchford. <laughs> you enjoyed Jeremy's story. Our storytelling techniques are a practical way to help you get yourself heard. Head over to youtellyours.com for details of classes and events both in Burbank and online. You can listen to this as a podcast at podcast.youtellyours.com or find it on iTunes. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel or the podcast. You can email me at mark at youtellyours.com if you have any questions or requests. Thank you for listening or watching. <laughs>